Greetings, Dr. Zion. Uh, this is Victoria. I'm going to review these nine points that are on the assignment. Um, I'm going to go right into it. Infection control prevents transmission of infectious agents. Uh, transmission agents or particles can be transmitted from host to host through uh, directly, indirectly, through droplets, airborne, uh, fecal matter or vector borne through animals. Um, the difference between direct and indirect um, contact is direct, you have to touch it, and indirect is when y you uh, come in contact with a contaminant on an inanimate object or fomite. Um, the host that would be the host if they come in contact with something inanimate. Uh, the host being either a human or animal. The susceptibility will depend on um, lifestyle, health status, um, impact of co-exposure, uh, gender, and age. Um, the glow germ activity was very interesting because uh, it shows efficacy and, and hand washing. Um, there's a small microbes that in a powder that you put on your hand and you're able to see the microbes under a UV light. Um, if you touch something that is has bacteria or is contaminated and you put it on your hands, you're able to see where it is contaminated on the hand. And same goes for hand washing. If you wash your hands and you show uh, or you look under the UV light, the places you can see the places that you may have missed when you washed your hands under the UV light. Um, that was very interesting. Uh, also, another lab activity showing uh, hand washing efficacy was using the agar, and you have to melt it. There's a process to, and let it cool in a Petri dish, and you put it through uh, on, the, on the Petri dish and swab a hand that has not been washed and roll it onto the agar and then uh, swab the hand that has been washed and roll that onto the other half of the agar. Then you have to turn it upside down, incubate it for 48 hours in, uh, the, under the temperature of 37, uh, 37 degrees Celsius. You would incubate it uh, for that amount of time, uh, room temperature, and so what it is, I believe the agar are the nutrients that the bacteria feeds off of, and you can tell and record the results from that um, that shows um, uh, the efficacy of hand washing once again. Um, and how are you going to see this with, you'll see it through the colonies or the colony morphology, and you're going to look for the characteristics of the morphology morph meeting to change. Um, going to see the characteristics of, for instance, elevation, shape, color, margin, um, size, uh, basically the distinguishing differences between each one of these small dots, which actually look like something a little bit more. Uh, PPE is personal protective equipment, which I wore a lot of in the nursing home, um, which include gown, uh, goggles, foot covers, mask, um, rubber gloves, and uh, the, uh, there's, a, there's a plastic shield that you also wore uh, sometimes. So, uh, sometimes we had to wear two masks, and uh, mostly the N95 was supposedly the most safe. Um, though they weren't foolproof, none of it was foolproof. Um, Okay, so my hypothesis was that hands should have more abundant bacteria prior to hand washing. Um, and uh, we found out that that's true through the two lab experiments that were given on the 28 minute video that we washed. Um, hand washing is the most effective way to prevent the spread of pathogens. And um, these two, the UV light, um, the, the glow germ activity, and the agar activity proved it so. All right, so I hope that I was able to cover all the parts here. Um, I'm gonna show you again. And um, 
Well, thank you very much for listening and have yourself a good day.